So the 2013 charts of Google's most popular searches in Australia are just in, with the top Google search at number one being what is twerking, shortly followed by who is God. Now on saying this, I don't think you have to be a genius to figure out which of the two questions is more important to be asking Google. I mean, one could potentially explain the reality of our existence, while the other would potentially leave us scarred for the remainder of our existence. And look, I know there's a lot of skepticism surrounding this issue and quite frankly, I don't blame you. I mean, the meaning of God has been thrown around so often we forgot what it means. From some Zeus-like man in the sky with a big beard, to Thor, to a half-animal, half-human creature, to Kanye West shamelessly producing a track titled I Am God on his album Yeezus, to Eminem then self-proclaiming himself as the rap god, a new brand of clothing titled I Am God, and who could forget Justin Bieber and his believers. You affectionately refer to your fans as beaners. N no believers. And now I understand that most of this may be exaggerated and many of these examples are mere semantics and plays on words that are probably being taken out of context as let's face it, nobody actually believes in Bieber and I highly doubt that Kanye West considers himself a god. When someone comes up and says something like, I am a god, everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a god. And now Kanye West smashes his head into a street sign really, really hard. Oh, Kanye. Oh, Kanye. Kanye, you okay? Sounds like Kay's got a new hit. A oh, god. That's who I think I am. Kanye. Oh, Kanye. Kanye, you okay? So with all these misconstrued definitions of God, the least I could do is help clear the water and help us finally find out who is God. Well, to begin, let's start with the things that we all agree on. First and foremost, we're here. We just began and we exist. And like all things that begin to exist, they require a cause. Things don't just come out of nothing, and although at times we sometimes wish they would, they don't. If I told you that this glass sprang into existence, this glass made itself, you said Muhammad Ali's crazy. So on saying that, knowing the cause of us is crucial to understanding who God is. Although we are able to explain that we did have a beginning, as many leading cosmologists have affirmed, we are still left unanswered as to what was the cause of our beginning. And before you lash out saying, oh, but we can't see what happened before we began, or you can't prove there was a creator, we say quite openly, neither can you disprove a creator. And by observing the reality of our world and our existence, its order, its structure, and the systems, I see no reason not to believe in a creator. But then one may ask, where did this creator come from? What was the cause of him? And it will go on forever and ever which would most probably lead to us never have ever been created. So for God to exist, he must exist without a beginning, therefore not requiring a cause, making him eternal. He should also be transcendent from his creation and not bound by any of the realms he had created, whether it is time, space or matter. For instance, when Steve Jobs makes an iPhone, he doesn't become the iPhone, he is separate. And of course, we could also argue that he is one, this makes the most sense and it would also avoid any potential conflict between two disputing or powerful
God.